Welcome students to lesson 19 of the Natural Hazards topic. In this lesson we will explore a case study of extreme weather in the UK, an event that caused devastation to southwest England in the winter of 2014. Please write the date, title and learning objective and have a pen and paper ready to learn. Time to review prior learning. Write once 10, answer the questions from memory and then mark your answers. Game time. 1. Destructive plate boundary. 2. Convection. 3. Build back better. 4. Low air pressure and rising air. 5. Rice. 6. Safi Simpson. 7. Extreme weather. 8. 38.7 degrees. 9. Global atmospheric circulation. 10. Storm surge. Give yourselves a mark out of 11 because number 4 is worth 2 marks. If you got 9 or more, excellent. If not, go back to previous lessons, watch the explanations again, and then come back to this 1 to 10 in a few days' time. To introduce this lesson, I'm going to show you a picture with some questions. Look at the picture and use your understanding to try and answer the questions, and then we'll discuss them. Here's the picture. Taken in Somerset, a county in England, in 2014. So number one, well, what you see is a man walking his dog, and you see he's walking on a raised area of ground, the rest of him surrounded by water. To his right is in fact a river, to his left is a field that's been completely flooded. So what may have caused this event to happen? Well, you could have said in a period of extremely heavy rainfall may have caused the river to burst its banks and to flood the land around. Four, what problems do you think this caused? Well, aside from the difficulty of walking a dog, this may have caused other problems, such as flooding fields leading to the destruction of crops, difficulty transporting people or goods around the area, may have forced people to leave their homes, may have forced people to not be able to go to school or to hospital. These are the kinds of events you might have thought of that would have happened as a result of this flood. So in this lesson, you're going to be able to answer these three big questions. Number one, what happened here? Number two, what effects did it have on the area? And number three, what did people do to reduce these effects and to mitigate the risk of future events like this having the same damage? So, where and what are the Somerset levels? Please write the subtitle and underline it with a ruler. This case study is all about an area of the United Kingdom called the Somerset Levels, which is located in the county of Somerset in southwest England, right here. This is the River Severn that goes up between Wales and England, and this area here, which connects onto the Somerset Levels, is very important as well. The Somerset Levels is an area of very low-lying flat land in this area here. This map shows the altitude of the land. Dark brown means the highest altitude. Light green, like this, means lowest altitude, so lowest sea level. All of this light green area is really flat and low-lying. As you can see, the Somerset Levels has a number of rivers traveling through it. For this story, the most important river is the River Tone and the River Parrot here, which, can, which have a confluence here and then both connect to go through this town called Bridgewater here. As you can see, the Somerset Levels is very flat land, mostly with farmland on it. One of the most famous places in Somerset, la uh, Somerset Levels is Glastonbury, which is well known for hosting the Glastonbury Festival. So this is what the Somerset Levels are, and now you know where they are. The second question we have to understand is why did they flood? It's January 2014, and for the last month and a half, the rain in England has been extremely high. It's been abnormally heavy and consistent. The ground in the Somerset Levels has become saturated with water, which means it can't hold any more. Much like when you fill up a sponge with water and water just comes off the top after it fills up, it becomes saturated. The same had happened to the ground in the Somerset Levels. So heavy rainfall throughout this period 
was the main cause of the flooding. Not only that, however, the Somerset Levels was particularly vulnerable to flooding because it's very low lying flat land, meaning that if the rivers burst their banks, then large areas of land would become flooded very easily. And that's exactly what happened. Prolonged rainfall means it goes on for a long time. So what actually did the floods of the Somerset Level flood event do? What was the problem that it caused? Well, the first was this. This man here was actually very lucky and very uh, intelligent in preparing in advance of the floods. He had sufficient money and time to build this mud wall around his home. And as a result, his house was one of the only houses in the area that wasn't completely flooded. But more than 600 homes in the Somerset Levels area were flooded, up to more than two meters in some cases. The gardens completely destroyed and their homes completely inundated, which means filled up with water. This of course had significant economic effects because it forced people to spend a lot of money renovating or repairing their homes. Not only that, the children that lived in the area were unable to get to school. This is an example of a social effect. A number of schools in Somerset were flooded and the roads connecting to them were also flooded, such as this primary school you see here. The long-term consequence of this, of course, is an effect on education. Children fell behind by several months in their education, and as a result, they had, many of them had to catch up in order to achieve similar grades as they were expected to. Farmers and agriculture was also significantly affected. Here you see farmers loading up sheep and other farming uh, ordinances such as hay bales and equipment and moving them out of the flooded areas because 14,000 hectares of land, farmland, were flooded during this event. A hectare is 100 meters by 100 meters, so it's a large area of land that was flooded. Now that water is not entirely clean always. It's contaminated often by sewage water or by manure or by fertilizers and other chemicals, leading to damage to crops. This need to move more than a thousand farm animals and the flooding of 14,000 hectares of farmland led to significant loss of income for farmers in the area. That's a significant economic problem. Finally this. The homes that were flooded, as I mentioned earlier, weren't just flooded by clean water, no. This water was contaminated by burst sewers, by, bur by farmland that had flooded with soil and manure within it. Manure is animal feces. And as a result of this, the homes were contaminated, causing significant environmental challenge. Pollution spread across people's homes and across the land. And as a result, people couldn't just return home when the floodwaters receded, which means went away. And so a major cleanup operation was needed in people's homes as well, costing more money and more time before people could move back in. So there was a large-scale disruption to people's lives as a result of the floods. So what do people do about it? Well, the first thing is this. After every natural disaster or natural event, the most important government-led response is to rescue people who are trapped. Some 5,000 people were rescued from their homes, in particular elderly people, from the most flooded areas by, for example, boat here. These people were taken to higher ground and were given temporary shelter, for example, in hostels and hotels, until the floodwaters were removed or went away. Within the first week, six enormous water pumps were loaned from the Netherlands, Holland, to Somerset. And these pumps rapidly removed hundreds of thousands of litres of water out of the farmland and returned them to the river, as you see here. And this contributed to the acceleration, which means speeding up of the removal of flood water, meaning that life could return to normal more quickly. These are both examples of immediate responses. They help save people's lives and they help protect property. 
The first long-term response and example of mitigation is this. In this picture, this is the River Parrot here, one of the main rivers in Somerset, being dredged. This digger is removing soil from the bottom of the river and putting it into these barges, and the effect of this is that the river is deeper. Because the river is made deeper, it has a higher capacity, meaning it can hold more water. And since it can hold more water, the idea is that it'll be less likely to flood, because when it does rain, it'll take more water to cause the river to overflow. This is called dredging. It's controversial for two reasons. Number one, it can damage the local ecosystem because digging up the sediment can kill different uh, plant species and animal species in the water. But number two, it's expensive and it doesn't last a long time. The sediment returns into the base of the river and so it needs to be repeated. People thought that the, the money could be better spent, for example, on putting trees by the river, which would absorb flood water. And the final long-term response was this. Roads throughout Somerset were raised like this, so that the next time it flooded, this is four years later, the floodwaters did not cover up the roads, allowing transportation to continue. And so normal life, and in particular, emergency services and transport to school and jobs were able to continue. These are examples of mitigation. So this, these are the events of the Somerset level floods of 2014. Remember this big idea. This is an example of an extreme weather event in the UK. And such events, particularly those involving heavy rainfall and flooding, are getting more and more common. Time to assess learning. Read the paragraph. Put the correct words in the gaps and then mark your answers. So number one, you should have said the Somerset levels floods. Two, extreme weather, three, parrot, four, 14,000, five, 1,000, six, sewage, seven, 600 flooded homes, eight, social effects, nine, economic effects, 10, pump water, 11, dredging, and 12, roads. Give yourselves a mark out of 12. If you've got 11 or more, you've really understood this. If not, go back to the explanation again, watch it again, and attempt this. Time to embed learning. I'm going to show you a question. Read the question, and then answer it using the understanding you've gained this lesson, and then mark your answer. Go for it. So you need to follow this structure to answer this question and use this as well to help you. Once you've written your answer, take your green pen and tick off this checklist by looking at your answer to see if you've written a perfect answer. If you've done these things in this order, then you have got six marks. So make sure that you've done these things. If not, Add in green pen beneath your answer any parts that you missed and improve them. Thank you so much for joining me this lesson on extreme weather in the UK. Next lesson, and for the final series of lessons in the natural hazards topic, we will be exploring possibly the most important issue of our time, which is climate change. Join me then.